So hi there and welcome to this week's video. My name is Charles and today I've come down to my local woodland to do some macro photography with a slight difference. Today I'm going to pit my mobile phone against my mirrorless Z6 camera just to see how good a mobile phone can be when it comes to macro photography. So if this is the kind of thing you're interested in, stick around and enjoy the ride. So just how are we going to do macro photography with a mobile phone? Mobile phones have great lenses these days, but they still can't do macro photography. The answer is, we use one of these. Now this is a clip-on lens that you fit in front of your regular camera lens on your mobile phone, and it essentially zooms the image. Now this is the very first time I'm trying this, I've literally just opened a box. So this is going to be a great experiment for you and for me. So just how is this going to work? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the shot with my Nikon Z6 mirrorless camera using a Sigma 105mm macro lens and then I'm going to try and replicate the same shot using the adapter here on my mobile phone just to see how the shots compare. So I think let's go find our first composition, set up the shot and then I'll talk you through the settings on both my mobile phone and my camera. set up my first shot. Uh, I'm in this lovely little patch of wildflowers. Uh, it's lovely white wildflowers. I I'm not sure what they're called. Maybe someone can tell me in the comments below. But I've zoomed in on one of these little white flowers, just um, focusing in on the middle of the stamens so that I can make sure I get a nice drop off of focus in the foreground and into the background. So what I'll do, I'm going to take the shot on my Z6 camera and then I'm going to repeat the process with my phone and then I'll put both images up on screen for you to see. So here's the first shot set up. Uh, as I said, I'm just going to zoom in on the stamen, make sure that they're as in focus as I want. We can just tweak the focus if need be. There we go. I think that's spot on. And now we're pretty much ready to take the shot. So it's 1 320th of a second, F11 and ISO 800. No focus stacking on this one. I'm simply just going to take the shot. I'm going to set a two second timer just to reduce any camera shake and then take the shot. So now I'm going to need to attach my mobile phone to my tripod. So I've got a little adapter here that will allow me to add my mobile phone to the tripod. So I'm just going to attach this on. And now my mobile phone can simply slip into the front. Now we have the mobile phone set up, we can very simply clip on the adapter, ready to take the shot. Now what I'm going to have to do is move my phone closer to my subject because it's just uh, too far out of focus. And then I'm going to have to recompose my shots. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my camera in pro mode. This just means it will shoot in RAW and I can choose the shutter speed and the ISO. So I'm going to set the ISO to the same as my camera, ISO 800. And then we're going to adjust the shutter speed to bring the exposure down. Oops, it was a bit too far. There we go. So that's set to 1 50th of a second and that's I think that's got a nice exposure. Now, 
At the moment it's struggling to get the exact focus that I want. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on the image where I want focus and I'm going to click lock so that it just stays focused where I want. And while the wind stopped blowing, I'm going to go ahead and take the shot. And what I'll do, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put both images up on screen for you to see and maybe you can let me know in the comments which one you think looks better. So for my next test, I want to have a look to see how easy it would be to actually do some focus stacking with a mobile phone. So I'm going to attach my focusing rail. Then I can attach my mobile phone adapter. And now we can put the mobile phone into the adapter and we're ready to compose our shot. So I've now got my next shot set up and it's this fern head that's just starting to unravel and I think it's going to look really pretty. So I've just mentioned we're going to try some focus stacking um, but looking at the image on screen actually needs very little focus stacking so obviously the way that mobile phones works out focus is ever so slightly different to a camera because of the size of the sensor I assume. But let's give it a go anyway just to see if it's even needed and then We'll do it on the mobile phone and then I'll pop it onto the camera, do the same test and then I'll pop the results up on screen for you to see. But very quickly I'll run you through my settings here. I've got this set to 1 3000th of a second, it's f2.4 on the mobile phone because it's a fixed aperture and I've got it set to ISO 800. There is a little bit of breeze blowing around but hopefully the focus stacking software will be able to take that into account when we take the shot. So anyway, let's get on focus stack the image and just see how it looks. So I've now finished the focus stacking on the mobile phone so what I need to do now is try the same thing but using my mirrorless camera. So I'm going to get set up now and then we'll do exactly the same process. Okay, so I've now got the shot set up on my camera and we've got 1 250th of a second, f11 and ISO 800. So I'm now going to go through this and take all the shots. Okay, so the first impressions are pretty favourable with the mobile phone with the macro lens adapter. The images were pretty sharp, as far as I could tell on the back of my phone anyway, and the phone had a really wide depth of field, so there was actually very little need to focus stack. We did it anyway, just because to give us a fair comparison against the camera. But first impressions are, if you had this on your phone, there would actually be very little need to do focus stacking. So I think let's head on home, let's check these out in the studio, zoom in and do a bit of pixel peeping just to see what kind of quality we've actually achieved.
So I'm back home now and I've got the images onto my computer where I've started to make a few basic edits such as tweaking the highlights and the shadows. But what I'm going to do now is take a little look to see how well the images stack up against each other in terms of sharpness and focus and the depth of field and the noise of the image. So I think let's just get onto the computer, compare the images and just see how well the images taken on the mobile phone stack up against a semi-professional camera. So here we are, here's the first image that I've taken. This is the wild flower taken on my Nikon Z6 mirrorless camera with a Sigma 105mm macro lens. Now it was set to f11, but even at f11 you can see this has got a really shallow depth of field. Um, but if you look here, the stamens here have got a really nice focus and you can even see the little blobs of pollen you know, you can even see some of the pollen on the leaves. You know, so it's really nice and we've captured lots of detail in this central section of the flower. And the depth of field means it blurs off really nicely into the background and it creates almost like a, a dreamy and ethereal sort of quality to the photograph. Now, um, this was shot at ISO 800, so let's take a little look at the noise. So I'm going to zoom into one of the softer areas of the image for the background and you can see there is a little bit of noise I've not actually done any noise reduction on this image so um, we'll be able to get a direct comparison um, yeah so there's not a lot of noise here so that's good that'd be very easy to fix in post so overall uh, I'm very happy with this image um, so let's compare this to see how it stacks up to the mobile phone version so here we are, here's the image that was taken on the mobile phone. Now let's ignore the fact that I couldn't quite get the same composition of the flower due to the, the position of the mobile phone and the tripod. Uh, we'll concentrate more on the technical aspects. Now, the first thing I can sort of see is that the depth of field is much wider, so we've got much more in focus from a single shot. Um, we can see here in the background, you can clearly make out one of the flower heads and these weren't actually that close. So yeah, the depth of field is much wider and we're getting much more uh, detail in the background. So we can still see the, the flower stem, for example, and some of the grasses that were coming up around it. So in terms of sharpness, this um, doesn't stack up quite so favorably with the SLR camera. But I would say when you're zoomed out, if this was going on Instagram, I don't think anyone would really be able to tell that this was shot on a mobile phone. Um, we've got a really nice amount of detail in the petals, for example. So, so actually, considering the adapter is only £30, uh, I think actually we've got a pretty decent amount of detail. And for social, like I said, for social media, I think this would be totally acceptable. The one area I'm a little bit disappointed in and this is down to the size of the camera sensor I should imagine, is the amount of noise that you get in this image. Now I've not done any noise reduction here and the amount of noise here is pretty high. Uh, so this would need some quite heavy noise reduction which ultimately would also reduce the quality of the image. So just to give you a direct comparison, if I looked at those two images side by side uh, and you look at the amount of noise here um, there's just there's no comparison the, the uh, mirrorless camera wins hand down so next let's take a little look at the unstacked version of the fern so again here's the camera version first um, so I, should, I took this shot at f11 but even at f11 you can see um, we've got a very shallow depth of field, so only a small portion of this image is all in focus at the same time. So, but again, very little noise, even at ISO 800, so I'm very pleased with that. So overall, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the quality from the camera, I've got no complaints. Now comparing this to the mobile phone, uh, the first thing that strikes me again is we've got a much wider depth of field so much more of the fern is in focus from the outset compared to the um, camera version uh, but this also means we get more detail into the background now this is a matter of personal taste but personally i preferred the image where the background is much softer where you get much more separation be between the foreground and the background 
Uh, let's have a little look at the sharpness zoomed in. So in terms of sharpness, it's pretty good. Now, I had tried to shoot these in raw mode, but unfortunately for some reason the camera only saved the JPEGs. Um, so I do feel that there's a bit of over sharpening been going on in the software here. Uh, we can see some sort of artifacts here. And uh, generally, yeah, the image feels like it's been over processed. So now let's take, let's move on now and take a little look at the stacked versions of the same photograph. So here we go, here's the version that is stacked and this took quite a lot of shots. I think I took about 30 images for this photo stack. Um, but I have to say it's stacked really nicely. I had very little problems when I stacked the image and we've got a really nice sharpness front to back. Uh, some really lovely details in these leaves. Again, sharpness, there's very little noise. Um, can't complain about the amount of noise in this image at all. It's uh, very, very high quality as far as I can tell. You know, we've even got some of the detail here from cobwebs that we're running across. So let's take a little look at the mobile phone version. And again, when I took this, when I, and I did the stacking, um, because of the wider depth of field, it actually worked to my advantage because I only had to take about six shots to be able to get this in focus from front to back. And although maybe there was a couple of problems in terms of focus in this area here, um, we have got a very good sharpness all along the stem here. And we've got some really nice details on the leaf here. Maybe not quite as much as the uh, camera version, but again, when you, if you looked at that on Instagram, for example, I don't think you would be able to tell there was any less detail in this shot compared to the mobile phone, uh, compared to the camera version. Again, we've even got detail here from the cobwebs. And okay, so we have got a bit of pixelation happening here in this area. And, and I would say when I stacked this image, I also had a lot of problems with the background causing problems with the stacking. But this was very easy to fix in my focus stacking software, which is Helicon Focus. And I was able to essentially take the background from one of the images and blend it with the rest of the focus stacked photo. So there we have it. We've compared the images taken on the mobile phone to those taken on the camera. And I have to say the image quality really stands up quite well. Okay, so the images were a little bit in the noisy side and the depth of field, you just didn't get that level of separation that you would get with a dedicated mirrorless or SLR camera. But uh, I would be guessing you're not going to be looking to sell these on a stock photography website or print these off in a large format. It's much more likely that you'd be wanting to put these onto a social media platform such as Facebook or Instagram for example and these images get compressed and scaled down anyway so you would be hard pressed to see those imperfections on such a small format. So would I recommend these adapters? Well, I certainly would. Um, for £35, this is something I can just put in my pocket. Uh, everyone has a mobile phone with them these days, or almost everyone, and so it really opens up macro photography to the masses. You can just go out with the family, not take any bulky equipment with you, and still be able to achieve some great macro photography without much outlay or time investment, shall we say. But anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this content today. If you have enjoyed it, please consider giving it a big thumbs up. Stick a comment below if you've used one of these adapters before, because I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you got on with it. And if you've enjoyed this content and want to see more content like it in the future, hit that subscribe button and I'll be bringing more subjects like this to you in the future. But anyway, that's enough from me today. Take care and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.